Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne. And today is part one of our series covering vocal tuning and editing with Melodyne Assistant. Now many of you out there are using Melodyne Essential, which has some great tools for this. But if you really want to step up to professional level vocal tuning and editing, Melodyne Assistant has the tool set that you need. And in these videos, I'll be primarily covering the tools that you get when you upgrade to Melodyne Assistant. Today is part one, which is our first moves. In the second video, we'll cover further tweaks and optimizations. So let's jump in here and take a look. This is a song called Fool For Your Touch by Abby Ahmad, a singer-songwriter out of Brooklyn. Sometimes I find that I'm lost in you. Okay, great. Now you get a, an idea of the type of music that we're dealing with right here. In this case, I'm going to want to keep things pretty natural sounding and not do anything too aggressive. So let's jump in. As I said, first moves are going to be pitch and time. And I might surprise some of you here by starting with time. And the idea there is that if you can get the movement and the groove and the phrasing right, you might be able to get away with a little less pitch correction which is a nice option to have. Okay, so I wanna adjust the timing of this first phrase right here, specifically this word, find. Let's give this a listen. Sometimes I, find that I wanna stretch that out a little bit so that the word find dovetails right into that snare drum right there. So I can simply right click on my context menu, and now we see the time tool. This allows you to move and or stretch and shrink a blob. And I'm gonna come to this word find and stretch that out to where that snare drum is. Let's give this a listen now. Sometimes I find that That's nice, I like that. It adds a little bit of tension as it lingers on and just drops into the backbeat. Very, very cool. Now let's point out for a minute here because some of you may have noticed this. This grid has nothing to do what's going on with the song right now song was not recorded to a click, so I've left the default DAW tempo at 120, and Melodyne will draw these grids based around your DAW tempo. In that case, it doesn't really apply here, so we've got a couple of options in ways that we can deal with this. One, you could come right over here to your timing grid, and instead of choosing any bar and beat separation, you can choose seconds. This is very useful when you're dealing with something that is not necessarily so rigid in terms of tempo. The other option that we have is you can always drop in your cursor like so, and then come over here and use your timing tool to move that so that it lines up and exactly where you want that to be. Now let's give this a listen again. Sometimes I find that I Perfect, I like the way that ties together right there. Now, when moving these blobs and stretching and shrinking them, there's some very specific and repeatable behaviors that you can get, but you have to know how to approach them. So let me show you a couple of cool things right here. Let's say I wanna make this whole phrase a little bit shorter. There's two ways to deal with that. I'm gonna select all of these blobs right here, and I want you to notice, if I grab this first blob in the middle, as I move it over, all of the earlier blobs stay the same length, only this last one shrinks down right there. So this is very useful if you want that specific thing and a longer note like this to be the only one that shrinks. However, if I grab this blob towards the beginning, now as I shrink them, you'll notice they all shrink relative to one another. So those are two different behaviors you can get if you want to stretch or shrink a group of these blobs. Now, you also may have noticed that no matter what though, something is stretching or shrinking. And what happens if we want to move this phrase without having anything stretch or shrink? The reason for that stretching and shrinking is a function of our algorithm here, which is the melodic algorithm. And this is what we want. We're dealing with a vocal. This is the right algorithm for that. The melodic algorithm is designed for vocals. Now you can use it for other monophonic sources like bass or clarinet but it's designed for vocals. So as a function, none of the blobs will ever overlap one another, which is what you would expect from a vocal performance. No two words will ever overlap one another. 
So if we want to change that, we have to make some changes to the way these notes are separated. If you right click and go to your note separation tool, now we see these thin lines. These are separations between notes. And this thin line is what's known as a soft separation. When there is a soft separation between notes, as you move one or the other, they will stretch, they are connected. So if I want to move things and not have them connected, I need to change this soft separation into a hard separation. Very easy to do, just right click again on your context menu. And this second tool down here, the separation type tool, if you choose this, now what I can do is double click on this soft separation and it becomes a hard separation. And you can tell because of this very hard bracket right here with the little arrows in the end. These two blobs are now disconnected. So any changes to this first group will not affect the second group. I can select all of these blobs, come over here to my timing tool, grab this in the middle, because if you grab it at the beginning, you'll still shrink or stretch, grab it in the middle. And now I can move these blobs as a whole without changing the overall length of any of them. Okay, great. Let's jump into some of the pitch tools, right? Listen to this phrase right here. Okay, so we've got our basic pitch tool, right? And I could use that to easily like slide this note up here to a little place that we want. But now if you'll notice, when I come to the pitch tool, we've got these gold lines, right? This is an assistant and not an essential. These are called transitions. And what they affect is the speed at which one note transitions into the other. So this can be used to give you a, a more legato performance or a more staccato punchy performance. But one of my favorite places to use it is places like this, right? Where we see this note sort of overshoot down and then come back up. Here we see the same thing here. This note overshoots down. So if I come over here to the end of the note, you'll notice towards the end of the note, the pitch tool becomes this sort of cantilevered X. That is our transition tool. I'm going to grab right here and drag up and slow down that transition. And I'm going to do this here as well. I'm going to slow down this transition. Maybe I'll take one here. And you'll notice when you slow down the transition, now much more of it for a longer period is at the note that you want it to be. So let's give this a listen. World's running mad. Okay, so I liked how that changes sort of the intentionality of this note right here. But because it doesn't swing down and then back up, it spends longer at the given pitch of the note it also has unmasked a little bit of this note's tendency to be flat right here. That's not a problem. This is how we zero in on improving a performance a little bit. So I'll move this one up a little bit and I'll move this one down. And this one I think needs to be affected, brought up a little bit right here as well. Same thing here. And now with these changes, let's give this a listen. World's running mad. I like that a lot better, right? That still sounds natural, but now we've sort of gently corralled it into a place that we like. Now, this is a perfect time to talk about the powerful and flexible nature of Melodyne's undo function. Now, in most DAWs and other programs, you have to use Command Z. And you can use Command Z here, but it is always a linear function that undoes your actions step by step. So, what happens when you want to undo some of your actions without affecting others? Melodyne has a way to help you out right here. If you right click and come to the context menu, you will get some different options depending upon which menu you choose, which tool you're looking at. But if you come to the main tool, you will see all of them. And here you can undo all of your pitch changes or just the pitch centers, which is the actual pitch, modulation, drift, the transitions. You can choose any of your timing actions. This gives you the ability to undo your pitch transitions without affecting the other edits as well. And not only is this action specific, this is note specific. So you can do this to specific notes that you want to. Okay, great. Now we've got a couple of other tools right here, which are drift and modulation. If you right click on here, you'll see under your pitch tool is modulation and drift. Drift for the slow changing of pitch over time, modulation for the rapid changing of pitch over time. Now, in this case, I'm going to start off with Drift, and it's this is because this is one of my favorite tools in Melodyne, and it's because you can use it a lot to a very useful effect without really getting a lot of artifacts, and it's because of the way that it works. 
it takes to the whole note and tilts it and shifts it that way to make it more in line with the pitch you want it to be. So let me grab my pitch drift tool and here's a perfect example, right? This note tends to drift up over time. This note tends to drift up over time. Same here, this one a little bit down. So I'm gonna grab this and just pull this down and even out that pitch drift over time. You can go in the opposite direction, but I don't wanna do that. I just wanna kinda of get a little more consistent straight ahead performance out of it. I'll do the same thing right here. I'll do the same thing right here. Same here. I might even do a little bit of that right there to even that out. And now let's give this a listen. So stay with me and we can see. All right, that's great. I like the, again, the intentionality, how it goes right to the note we want it to. But the same thing happened. This has unmasked a little bit of this note's a tendency to fall a little bit flat. So I can just grab all of these, come over here to my pitch tool and bring them up like so. And then maybe I'll just choose this one and bring that up a little more and choose this one and bring this up a little more. Eh, maybe I'll take that one. And then since we altered this one, I'll bring this one up a, a little bit more right there as well. So let's hear the original. Here's our bypass button. This bypasses all of Melodyne. Here's the original. So And here it is after we've made the changes. So stay with me and we can nice, we have just gently corralled that into a little bit tighter performance where we want it and it still feels very nice and natural. Okay, now that's drift, but I wanna talk about modulation, which is really primarily designed for vibrato like we see right here. And I wanna pause for a second and talk about this because very often what I will see people do is come to this modulation tool and look at a blob like this and they don't like how the, the line is not consistent. So they will even out all of the inconsistencies in that line right there. And you can do that. And then you could take your pitch tool and move this right here and double click. And now it is bang on. But if we listen to it, it sounds a little artifact. I don't like that as much. So I will sometimes use my modulation tool to even out a performance a little bit like that, but I will tend to do it towards the end as a last little bit of polish right there, being very aware of artifacts. What modulation is designed for is something like this right here, this vibrato. Let's hear this phrase. It's a really nice vibrato that she's got at the end right there. I wanna exaggerate that. So I'm gonna right click again and choose my modulation tool. And I'm gonna drag this up just a little bit right here. I really want this to be very, very clear. Let's hear what it sounds like now. Yeah, I might go a little less than that, but I really like the way that that added a little bit more character to that right there. Now. If you really want to go all in on control on vibrato like this, you really need to separate each one of these out. And instead of using the separation tool, what you can do is come over to where the separation tool is. And we've got a function that is designed for vibrato that is separate note as trills. And if we select this, this now brings this note into a bunch of separated trills like this. And this gives you excellent control, right? So I can sort of, come to my pitch tool now and make all of these within the guidelines of where I want them to be and really corral and control this exactly as I want it to be right there. Move that one up a little bit, move this one right here, I'll move this one up, keep that one there. I might just move this one. It gives us really exacting control over how these notes behave. All right, so let's listen to this again now that we've controlled it exactly as we want. That's excellent. I really like that fine level of control of that. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.